Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about Quant Network KKQ and T, so let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here. I have two tweets in a row that I do want to talk about with Bitcoin Archive, and the first one is just in Australia to launch new cryptocurrency regulation uh, framework in 2023 to modernize finance system. And then over here, we do see just in Germany. Now is the time for serious cryptocurrency regulation, says Germany's regulator in call for global action. Now, I want you all to realize that we are starting to see a global push for crypto regulation. And it's all centered around modernization of the financial system. Now, what is one thing that I've said on this channel time and time it's like I, I, I probably sound like a broken record at this point whenever I talk about QNT because I say this all the time. It's there's two extremely big obstacles that we need to get over to have mass adoption of crypto. One, regulations, which we are starting to see blossom into effect now. But the other one, the other one is interoperability. Now, with interoperability in mind, like I said, what we are probably going to see within 2023 is regulatory talks and discussions and planning, and we will start to see them morph into reality. And then what comes next is focus on interoperability. That's where Q&T steps in and becomes a huge, huge player. And I even said on Twitter, I even said uh, just the other day, I said, if you believe that crypto will be crucial to the future of finance, then you should 100% be researching and stacking Q&T. Why? Because q &T will be vital in the advancement of interconnecting the legacy system to DLT systems. This will be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And no, I'm not, you know, saying this for clickbait or anything like that. No, it's because, like, when we look at what's happening and when we look at these major areas around the world that do want to push for cryptocurrency regulation, what are they doing with it? What's their plan to do with it? Modernize finance system. Uh, they want to modernize their financial systems, and this is all happening in 2023. This is going to be in 2023. We're going to see so much huge announcements around regulatory frameworks with crypto in 2023. And then 2024, we'll most likely see this all go fully live. We will start to see major countries adopting DLT, adopting blockchain technology. Like This is going to happen so Fast. I don't think people re really realize how large of an opportunity we have in front of us when we do talk about Q and C because interoperability, I, I, I talk about it all the time, but interoperability as a use case is much bigger than anyone can anticipate because when we focus on XRP, you know, yeah, they're going after a $156 trillion cross-border payment market. Yeah, on-demand liquidity is incredible. All this is great, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, if you can't have XRP plug and played into the legacy system, which technically you can with RippleNet if you have the, uh, if you have the partnerships in place, if you can't do that, then it's a waste of time. What Quant is doing is much bigger than what we see with like RippleNet, right? This is allowing for a, a gateway API, one single API, to plug and play the entire DLT system of crypto. We're not just talking about one DLT. We're talking about all of the DLTs in crypto. It will plug and play all of those systems into the legacy system. And this is going to be so exciting. I don't think people re really see the volume and the value in that. It's going to be massive. And we do see over here from just a tech guy, just to prove my overall opinion here, Digital Euro needs legacy interoperability. Coincidentally, Quant partnered with Nexi. It selected as the front end prototyping. And here you guys have the ECB is running a Digital Euro prototyping exercise. The goal of this exercise is to allow market participants to develop front-end prototypes that can be integrated with the back-end infrastructure developed by the Euro system. I want you guys to understand that like, when we look at interoperability, when we look at what Quant's doing, you won't even see what Quant's doing once it goes fully live. It's going to be on the back-end of this entire infrastructure. Like I, I, I always say like DLT will also be on the back-end. You won't see DLT at the front-end of any of these processes. Because it's going to be the, the, the infrastructure that powers one massive global infrastructure. This is very, very interesting. And uh, we do see down here that it's compatible with the Euro systems backend infrastructure as well. Uh, this is also going to innovate further beyond just like the typical 
you know, Euro system, like this will also connect to DLT and all that kind of stuff. Like interoperability is the big success rate around crypto adoption. So if you want mass adoption of crypto, guess what? You need interoperability. And we do see over here the best consultancy bureau in the world. Shout out to San and L11. Uh, McKinsey predicts interoperability is one of two primary development uh, horizons in the next five years. The age of interoperability is upon us, where QT has the most complete and the most advanced solution. I am ready. Are you? And here we have it. So, one. In the next five years, McKinsey estimates that there will be two primary development horizons for blockchain. One, growth of blockchain as a service, BAS. BAS is a cloud-based service that builds digital products for DLT and blockchain environments without any setup requirements for inf infrastructure. This is currently being led by big tech companies. Two, interoperability across blockchain networks and outside systems. Increased interoperability will mean that disparate blockchain networks and external systems will be able to view, access, and share one another's data while maintaining integrity. Hardware standardization and scalable consensus algorithms will enable cross-network use cases such as the Internet of Things on blockchain infrastructure. This is very exciting. And also, by the way, McKinsey also predicts that the metaverse uh, metaverse based projects could be worth up to like, I think it was like $13 trillion by 2030. Like they have an incredible outlook on a lot of things around crypto, but I will say this interoperability definitely is going to be a big key one. And I don't agree with the growth of blockchain as a service. Um, I think that that will definitely happen, but I think that we need regulations to be a focus point too. I think that regulations with interoperability are like the big two obstacles around crypto. And we do see over here from Greg Lunt 27, Gilbert is speaking, Q&T, LAC chain. By implementing blockchain technology, Latin America can leapfrog all the legacy infrastructure and barriers they've had in the past, of, uh, sorry, in the past to real world, uh, real time digital assets. And uh, listen closely to this. By implementing blockchain technology, they're able to leapfrog all the legacy infrastructure and the barriers that they've had in the past to real world real-time digital assets in a very short period of time, benefiting people by having better payment systems to facilitate more innovation, stronger GDP growth, and allowing for seamless trade between the different parties. Our approach is bringing the technology to the masses, and you can't be limited by geography. The very nature of blockchain is global, and the very nature of how society and businesses operate today is through globalization is also global. And yeah, I mean, like at the end of the day, when we look at uh, what's happening around crypto and around our current financial system, we are seeing a huge leapfrog of technological advancements happening before our eyes. And again, if you are open to this, if you have, if you're awake to seeing what's happening right now, you are going to not only see the biggest revolution of technology but you're seeing the biggest revolution of payment technology itself that will not only spread globally around every financial system, but it's also going to be spreading everywhere around every individual out there that is transacting on Amazon, transacting through their bank, transacting in the store, swiping their card, all of this. Like everything that we are seeing is building up to one massive go live date where everything is completely revolutionized by DLT technology and crypto, and it's going to be powered by interoperability, having that legacy infrastructure plug and played into blockchain technology. This is so incredible. Like, I, I, I talk about this quite a bit because of the opportunity in front of us. And we do see over here from um, ASIM Spec, I hope that I'm saying that name right. Uh, so we have Oracle, Hyperledger, and Nexi all telling you Quant is legit. Now the CTO of R3 mentioning their interoperability demonstration as the biggest thing in DLT in 2022. Uh, Q&T is at the center of real adoption, or you can speculate on retail coming back to pump Ponzi's and JPEGs. And uh, yeah, here you guys have from just a tech guy yet again, enterprise DLT interoperability is solved. And uh, here we have from, uh, if I'm right, it's possible the most important blockchain news of 2022 for business was the announcement that everybody missed the world's first live interoperability demonstration between two production level enterprise DLT platforms. Because of, like, again, like interoperability sounds boring, right? Like, oh, it's, it's interoperability, it's whatever, blah, blah, blah. No. This is not boring because every single major bank, all of these huge names around R3, uh, you look at Finality. Finality has some incredible individuals tied to it. But 
you look at R3, you look at Hyperledger, you look at Oracle, you look at all of the players that are tied to Quant, like all of these major names domino effect into thousands and thousands of major names. Like it is so, so incredible to say the least. Like I, I just don't understand how people are not seeing the bigger picture. We do see over here from Quant, a digital pound uh, enables consumers and businesses to automate complex and cumbersome processes and implement logic into money. It offers new efficiencies and faster workflows. And here we have from Daniel Field. Uh, he is from head of blockchain UST Global. We are seeing so much upside from CBDC exploration, new models, new efficiencies, also new consumer protections and better ways to communicate risk or lack of thereof um, in chained transactions, which could lead to lower barriers to entry for entrepreneurs and also lower lending rates. Everything that we are starting to see is centered on digitization. We are seeing a global digitization push around every single market, every single industry, every single sector, everything that we see on a day-to-day -day basis being upgraded before our eyes. And this is all possible because of interoperability, having those rails in place to connect everything to one massive network. This is going to be something special. This is, like I've said, the once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, a lot of people talk about the, uh, the, you know, the wealth transfer, the great wealth transfer. I've talked about this many, many times. The largest wealth transfer in history. Yes, it is happening. It's coming. And, um, you know, what, what, what does that mean, right? Well, it's very simple. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Like this, like having, having Quant at the forefront, the core of the entire infrastructure, having that plug-and-play through DLT, you are going to see hundreds of trillions of dollars moved over these networks per year. You are going to see massive adoption of this technology. And you know what's crazy about this? Is that it's not going to take... 50 plus years. No, we are getting very close. I would say, you know, give it some time. You know, give it like, I, I always say the three to five year time frame. I think that the three to five year time frame is a great way of uh, looking at it. We might not see $100 trillion within that time frame. I'd say $100 trillion by like 2035 is, uh, is possible. Because by that point, we should not only have regulations in place, but we should already have started to onboard major entities into crypto and cbdc's central like when we talk about digitized fiat and central bank digital currencies by that point we should have a ton of transactional value and volume pushed through these dlts and through a dln which is a distributed ledger network and that all that value all that volume is going to amount to massive wealth creation for the early visionaries those individuals that are a part of this early on and it is something very remarkable to say the least so with that being said i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord down in the description below us hose up that you all have a beautiful day beautiful night wherever you guys are on this world it's been nick peace out guys